Okay, guys, so here's a little bit of a question I get, uh, I guess pretty frequently, about uh, drill starting your engine. So I will get into that now. But anyway, you will find two different styles. I mean, there's a lot of different styles out there depending on what manufacturer you have. But um, so when it comes to drills, uh, I have drill started engines before actually on video, and I'll show you. Uh, the best way to start is take your your impact or not your impact don't use an impact I should say and uh, You see how like you turn it all the way down to one. It's like a ratchet and you turn it up the more you turn it, it gets harder Like probably around the 14 setting maybe 16 I'm guessing probably try around that area uh, and that'll save you from doing damage because if your um, engine is flooded with fuel or you decided to spray a bunch of WD-40 in there, which you shouldn't do anyways, or use a bunch of after an oil, you can't compress those liquids. So what will happen is if you stick your drill on the back there, they make so much torque, it'll try to compress that liquid and you can break the connecting rod, you can shear the pin off the crank, you can break the wrist pin, uh, crack the piston, uh, do all kinds of damage. So just be very careful when you're doing that. Use your torque settings, like I said. Uh, otherwise, you can damage things. Now, there is a couple of different types. Well, I know there's more than these two anyways. These are just kind of what I had laying around to make a video with. Of uh, one-way setups, or starter setups. Now, a lot of people look at something like a Dynamite 28, or uh, SH21 or uh, you know a lossy 350 or something and think oh well you know I could drill start that no problem well sorry to say you can't uh, unless you have one of those Sullivan Tiger drive things and the reason why is this has what's called an internal one-way bearing so the one-way bearing is actually inside the engine and what will happen is if you do that sure you'd be rotating the engine it starts up and it runs and as soon as you pull the socket away the starter shaft will come out, the crankshaft will whip around and smash that one-way bearing right through your engine and completely destroy it. That goes for LRP engines too, since they're actually made by SH. Same manufacturer that makes Megatech, Dynamite, Lossy, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you have a setup like this guy, this HPI 15E, uh, you can take, I think this is a 14 millimeter, so find yourself a, a shallow 14 mil socket and like I said, this one-way shaft doesn't come out unless you take the engine apart. And then what you do is you take your drill, find out, you know, try some torque settings, prime it a little bit, and you just stick it on there and you basically hit the trigger and go for it. Um, now, if, like I said, if you over-prime, you could do damage, so just be careful. And then usually when it starts running, when you pull it away, it usually takes the one-way bearing with it. And it'll just run like that. It's fine to run it like that. It won't hurt nothing. Um... Yeah, it's just, uh, you just got to be careful, basically. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, they, um, you know, try to uh, use a drill or an impact, or the drill might not spin fast enough so it won't start, or they put it on the highest torque setting because it's flooded and they break something in the engine and wonder why. That's why. Um, a lot of people say, oh, the dynamite pull starters are garbage. Well, they're not. Usually, the reason why they fail is because people overextend them like they're trying to start a big ass chainsaw and they just reef the crap right out of it and they just yank the cord right out of the pull starter housing um it happens i've seen it all the time people, oh pull starters suck other oh, junk blah 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 no it's just you don't know how to use it properly uh or you know the engine's flooded so they get frustrated they try to yank it harder they they break the spring or the casing or again they yank the cord out of it and they freaking blame the manufacturer it's not their fault you do have an engine that's hard to turn over with a pull starter, it's going to be even harder. It's going to be more harder on the engine with a drill. That's what I like about pull starters. You can feel what's going on. You go, oh shit, it's flooded, where the drill's just going to keep rocking the damn thing and forcing it to turn over. Um, so yeah, just, you know, if it's flooded, stop. You know, clear the flood, take the glow plug out. Spraying WD-40 inside your engine does not clear a flood. It makes it worse. So people that go on about that are idiots. Uh, there's a lot of, like I said, shit advice out there, but, um, and again, my, well, my pull starter that you guys see me rewind is because I was yanking on it and pulled a little bit too hard and it started to flood. I thought, oh, it's going to fire and it fired once and I pulled it again a little bit too hard and I pulled the knot out. 
big deal. It took me all of what? A couple minutes on video to fix it. No biggie. But, like I said, there's a bunch of different kinds of engine manufacturers out there. So, if you have one where the starter shaft doesn't have to be an SH, like I'm, I think those Max stars are like that too. So, if the starter shaft comes out like this and it has an internal one way bearing, don't use a drill on it or don't try to run it without, um, without the pull starter housing on at least. You can use a bump start. So, per se, this engine here, the pull starter breaks apart, and you think, well, shit, you know, I can't drill start it. Now what do I do? Leave the pull starter housing on, and if you have a bump box, bump start it, and it'll be perfectly fine. Just this guy right here will keep that shaft from falling out and destroying everything. This guy, you could pull start it, drill start it, bump start it, doesn't matter. Uh, and it's perfectly fine to run just like how it is in the video. But, um, yeah, anyways... They just keep getting comments on, how do I drill start my engine without screwing it up? Well, that's how you do it. Torque settings, use them, pay attention, don't flood it. Um, make sure you're spinning it the right way because I have seen people put the one-way bearing on the wrong way and they're cranking it and cranking it, cranking it and cranking forever and they're going, oh, the piece of shit doesn't want to run. Oh, the freaking these things suck, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, actually, just take the one-way bearing off, spin it around, change direction on your drill and try again. <laughs> Usually most of these guys rotate, oh, what way do they rotate? I can't really remember. I think they rotate clockwise, don't they? Yeah. Or counterclockwise, whatever. I'm sure most of you guys know that. So, um, yeah, if it doesn't want to start in one direction or if it sounds funny, you might have the, uh, the one-way bearing in backwards. So, that's something to look at. But anyways, enough rambling here. Hopefully that clears up some... Uh, questions that you guys had that you keep asking in the comments it's great to see where everyone's from by the way that's really cool you guys are all awesome thanks for watching as always and uh keep on burning nitro out there cheers uh, one more thing before i go hopefully tomorrow or the next day um hopefully today that'd be great um i get those bearings to the pro 15 and i'll strip it down and replace the rod pin and bearings on camera for you guys i know you guys are probably sick and tired of seeing that fucking thing but whatever uh yeah anyways and i'll get to that break in for the sh18 and the t-max but uh until then again guys chill um keep burning nitro talk at you later thanks for watching